Hi guys, uh, today we're joined by Tia from the Shaggy Dog Grooming Salon uh, to talk about dog grooming, which is something uh, us as a business don't actually uh, say anything about because we don't really know much about it. So that's why Tia is here. But you do have a big part towards it though, in terms of nutrition of the dog, okay. what they're eating and stuff like that, has a big effect on the coat, health, so things like that. So you may not be physically part of it, but yeah. you are in somewhat a big, big part of it at the same time. Okay. So you both come together. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and the business, when did when did that start? Uh, the Shaggy Dog Review Salon started a year ago, nearly a year on the 1st of May. So oh, really? it's a nearly a year on baby. <laughs> um, and yeah, so the, it purely started with my dream job as eight years ago when I was working in a salon. Um, I first started off as a hair sweeping girl and then <laughs> worked my way up. This is a dog, this is dog this is, Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, um, in, in, in the salon and worked my way up slowly and surely and then I decided to leave there, um, unfortunately I didn't have any um, vacancies available, yeah. um, went into the big wide world <laughs> and then I decided, you know what, I really want to do something that I love again and so I told my partner I'm going to be handling my notice in my full time job and so we discuss things around that and how to go forward. And now we're yep. here, I'm here and the salon is thriving and I've got such amazing clients Excellent. and um, amazing contractors that I work with Good. as well, which well is done. awesome. So tell us about grooming a dog. You've got dogs, I assume? Yes, so I have. have. I've got three bundles of joy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three French bulldogs I've got. Okay. So they're a single coated dog. Um, they're currently molting at the moment. So people that have got um, double coated dogs or a single coated dog will be having hair around the house. So now is the time to get your dog ready for spring. Mm -hmm. And there's loads of different equipments and tools that you can use and we can get into that yeah. a little bit later. Okay. But um, yeah, so I have three dogs myself. Okay. Um, I've always loved the breed. I've always, I've always enjoyed it, but unfortunately. What are their names? Oscar, Elsa, and Peaches. Excellent. <laughs> and Elsa is named after. I was going to say yeah, Fred, yeah. <laughs> she got okay. to, but yeah. So from a from a grooming point of view, obviously yeah. you have people bringing their dogs to you. Yes. Do they groom their dogs outside of? You should you? always groom your dog at home. It's not the groomer's responsibility to have everything sorted for you in that one groom. I mean, I recommend um, dogs come into every six to eight to twelve weeks right. so depends so depend on, on your breed. dog yes and it also depends on the the type of coat they've got right. um i mean some dogs i actually do every four weeks um okay. that is mainly because their dog either has an odor um or it sheds a lot yeah. um and within that obviously there is a warning if you, if you do wash your dog too much you can remove the natural laws from their coat okay. etc but as long as you're using the correct shampoos that re, you know give the yeah. skin what it needs again and also the correct diet to yeah. balance that out then you're all okay it's fine. so is there a, a if you could give someone a ballpark oh, i should wash my dog like you, you generally often? can't because oh, okay. it's all about the dog so for instance one of my dogs um i i bath one of them every eight weeks to 12 weeks depending but the other one mm. elsa if we go on a walk, I have to bath her. There's no doubt about it because she will roll in anything possible. Okay, yeah. So it's all dependent on your dog and your yeah. dog's needs. And you so can't... people that do a bit of canning cross yeah. are probably doing it really regularly or should be doing it really regularly. <laughs> but a, a maybe an indoor dog, yeah. less less regular. Exactly. And I also, if you've got a new puppy as well, um, getting used to the bath, even if you're just putting your puppy into the sink and running some water on the feet, yeah. just get used to them elements because yeah. Getting your puppy used to being groomed is one of the biggest things because it will make your life so much easier. <laughs> because if you don't, you are gonna you are making a big pit for yourself. So right. you need to get going with start implementing grooming your puppy as well. Okay, excellent. So, dog comes in, needs yeah. a groom. Yeah. What, what do you do? So first of all, when the dog comes in, I perform a health check. Um, I'm not veterinary qualified at all. So when I do the health check, it is though just checking the ears, the mouth, the pads, you know, yeah. around the body, checking there's no parasites, any lumps and bumps. Yeah. All my clients have a card. So on that card, if I notice any lumps, I'll mark on it and we'll examine it and let the owner know if anything yeah. progressive gets worse. So we just help it in that aspect mm -hmm. as well. Um, dog will come in, hopefully happy as Larry, <laughs> which some of them to be fair are. Some right. of them run in, they're well happy to be there. Yeah. What can I say? It's mean. It's mean. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
and they'll come in and then what will happen first of all they get put onto the the table yeah um and they'll have their hygiene area done so the hygiene area is the lower part yeah um their pads clipped as well and the nails trimmed too okay. once that's been done then they'll move to the bath mm -hmm. and within that depending on the the coat, the coat type, it's skin type, the dog skin type, yeah. we will use the correct shampoo. So your dog could have sensitive skin, mm -hmm. so therefore you would either use an oatmeal or an aloe vera shampoo. Yeah. There's so many products, that's the thing, there's so many products out yeah. there, you've just got to find what's right for your dog. Mm -hmm. um, if your dog's fine, then I would just use a normal scented shampoo. Okay. Um, once I said it's shampoo, then I have conditioner and also a body massage in the bath. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I get the full work. So how long does that take? So they, they arrive at nine minutes. What dog are we by. talking about? Are we talking about right, okay. a German Shepherd? Are we talking about a French Bull? Like, generally, it's so Is there an average? Um, I actually quite like having the bath time a longer period because mm. they are getting, you know, you're stimulating the, the blood to the surface. You're yeah. giving them a good massage. You're relaxing them. Mm. We have music on. Like, like, it's just a nice, it is a nice Have they got a particular favourite? Well, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do actually put, if for an anxious dog, if an anxious dog is in, yeah. I'll either put classical music on in the background, yeah. or one of my favourites, Beatrix Potter and um, Peter Rabbit. So basically, there's been a study proven that yeah. reading to your dog can actually relax your dog. So, uh -huh. Beatrix Potter's in the background. <laughs> But you know, you know, there's different things and all dogs work uh, All the things I thought you might say, that wasn't one of them. Oh, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> but no, there, and there are other things you can use to relax your dog in any element. So you can use, there are sensors, you know, the plugging wall things yeah. that you can put on. Um, lavender is a good one as yeah. well. But again, if your dog is sensitive to certain uh -huh. smells and things, please be careful and seek veterinary advice because... Well, it's interesting actually, we've had uh, not many, but in the last 10 years, I would say 10, 15, uh, dogs or, or people come in yeah. um, who who couldn't stop itching of the dog and it turns yeah. out to be scented candles. Yeah, that's it. And at the moment, these um, oil diffusers that you've got around your house, right, yeah. so they're like a pod thing, you put your water in, you put your oil in and this yeah. puff of smoke comes out. Mm. There's another thing that's releasing a chemical uh, into yeah. the air. You've got to be so careful. And that thing that, that we I can pick up on as well. So okay. when I'm washing the dog, you can yeah. see the skin, you can see that certain mm. things. and. If an itchy shampoo doesn't work and calm down, and just, you then obviously you need to go see the vet and see, yeah. or eliminate things that you recently have changed in your household. Yeah. Even simple things. If you put your dog's bed in the wash, yeah. stop that. You know, have a look at what you've been using. Yeah. Remove that element and see if you can progress with something else that's more sensitive to your dog. And if a dog sleeps with their own on their bed, mm -hmm. uh, which we we that, have, yes, um, what they're washing that. That clothing, uh, yeah. that bed sheets, in, sometimes can have a massive effect. I've noticed that a lot recently. And also, when you're washing, if you have got the bed sheets, mm. you've obviously still got dog hair, dog skin, yeah. your skin, and you're in the washing machine. Washing machine, even after it's been washed, there is still hair on that. Yeah. On 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 your sheets, so make sure you're giving it a good good flicking outside yeah, to get yeah. it all off. So. Excellent. Okay. So once they've left you, nicely groomed. Yeah. Uh, what what are they doing at home? So hopefully, depending on you've the... you've got loads of I know, stuff. I've bought all my bits and bolts. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, once they've gone home, they are going to be grooming their dog regularly. Mm -hmm. Again, depends on what type of dog. You could do it daily, it could be weekly, it could be every So let's week. take a... Uh, just so we okay. can focus. Something like uh, Cockapoo, the most popular breed around at the moment. Yeah. So the Cockapoo that so goes home. So the Cockapoo home. that goes home, it's, again, it's dependent. You can have a Cockapoo that's yeah. got a really, really curly coat that you need to keep on top mm. of, or it could have a straight coat, so you don't have to brush it every day. Yeah. It could be every other day or once a week. Okay. Um, my mum's got um, a Cockapoo and a, and a Cabochon, mm. and she literally brushes them every week, and, and that's it. And whenever I go there, being the groomer that we're like, oh, I'm always inspecting them, and yeah. there's never anything. Okay. I think before I come, she's like, that. Oh, quick. <laughs> what are you looking In for? Panic. When you say well, you're inspecting. So when I look at the dog, obviously the mat, so the key places mats always are, are either under the armpits, which are really sensitive and I know they're really difficult to get to. Mm -hmm. So if you have got your dog and you go to an alternative groomer, mm -hmm. You, I would personally ask the groomer if they could just shave their armpits. An alternative groomer. So obviously, if they go elsewhere, I would go somewhere yeah, else, right? If they go elsewhere, yeah. then you know, ask your groomer, is it possible if you could just shave the armpits? I mean, right, it's, okay. it's not hard. You just do a template and. I mean, no uh -huh. one likes hairy armpits anyway, do they? So you go. And <laughs> 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 um, there's the armpits. Um, drop ear dogs. 
behind the ears like yeah. literally behind here is the key place yeah. again you've got to think if they're at home your dog will probably play up if you're at home mm. you know they want to play they don't want to be sat yeah. and pulled around by you yeah. so when you're grooming behind the ear they can get a bit irritated but mm. you just got to persevere another place is um the hind area yeah and the tail because yeah. it's sensitive and yeah. it's such an awkward thing to, to brush yeah. as well but with the help of some of these products so for um knots and tangles and things yeah. i really recommend this product so this is from pro pooch yeah um it is a detangling spray there are other products on the market but this is one that i particularly use i've used a few but for me mm -hmm. this generally is the best okay. one it's so reactive so what i would do if they're in the bath and i'll notice that they're a bit knotty i'd put this on first yeah. to let it just sit in and soak in then what i'll do is i dab them down i dry them down use a high velocity dryer which is something you probably wouldn't have home but it's an equipment that I right have. so it's just a strong hair it's dryer. a really strong hair right. dryer and it's perfect because it helps blow out any knots and it really gives you a clear indication of the the skin and yeah. you can see everything okay. um and then once you're on the table and i've got the hair dryer going i would then use this little beauty oh i've literally these are my favorite brushes in the world so this is a sort of slicker brush it is a slicker brush but it is a um matte detangler brush and they come in different you can get loads of different slicker brushes so you've got your short pin ones mm -hmm. and then you've got your long pin ones these are designed totally differently to how these are now you can see the where the pins are and and the um, layout of them so this basically will help you pull out the mat right or, or the knot should i say if your dog is completely matted i did a video on this the other day if your dog is completely matted you need to go to to a, a groomer or a vet please do not and i'm like do not try and brush all of these mats out you will cause your dog such severe harm and distress and like, wow. it's it's awful i mean i very rarely get fully matted dogs and if i do no. i will i will just shave them off there's nothing i can do like, there's oh, really? no way i will sit and pull on a dog's coat so rescue dogs potentially would fall into that yeah do you know what it <laughs> If if you were rescuing a dog now and it mm. went to the grooming, then more than likely. But because it's been in a dog, oh, if it's been in a home, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say so. You would be surprised. It's sometimes the most loving people mm. who love their dogs, but don't know how to love them. Yeah. Do you know if that, yeah, yeah, if no, that exactly makes right. sense? Same, same thing happens with food as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you just don't have an understanding. But that is why I'm here today. Yeah. And that is why I'm happy to just talk about all different bits and bobs and things yeah. and how to do yeah. them. So yeah. that's knots and tangles. But like I say, there are different ones. I mean, this one's a lot softer. It's a lot more bendier. Yeah. Um, that's perfect for a puppy, that one. So this brand is Simpsons. Yeah. Um, they are online. Yeah. Like, um, the, on their website, you can buy them online, and I've been recommending all of these to my. To How my much would something like that? I think at the moment, I think it's like thirty-eight pounds. I think, don't quote me. Um, and how long I mean three. you're using it every day I'm using these every day well again it's dependent so once your pins start to move out of place and start mm. pointing in different directions then you need to get a new one it's all you don't have to put a lot of pressure on right um, I mean I, like, I've had these for about eight months maybe um, yeah eight months so these are going to last years for someone at home exactly okay. as long as you look after look after them yeah clean the hair out make sure they're nice and clean and that will give you a long flash span <laughs> it's turned into an infomercial. Oh no! And what else have you got? Also knots. This is a perfect little dematting tool. It looks scary. It, yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, you basically... Um, so let me explain what a mat actually is first. So a mat, through a microscope lens, if you looked in, it will literally look like a massive thorn bush. So the hair will actually be broken in different places because you've got to think that hair has been it's been tangled and wrapped around and it's so so tight you literally can't it, you can't do anything. Okay. So what often happens is the mat will then fall and then the owner says, "Well, I've brushed my dog today." They have, but all they've done is brush the top layer of fur. They've not actually brushed underneath. Okay. So this is why these brushes are so amazing, and this is why there's two different types. So if you have a long pin slicker brush, you're able to pick up underneath the fur and then pull out. Yeah. If you have got this brush, or you use one of these brushes, so I don't know why you would, but some people do, you are literally just brushing the top bit. Is that because this brush looks, uh, so if you've got a dog that potentially 
squirms around yep. or doesn't like it yep. they're using it because it, it appears exactly nicer exactly that so this is perfect for puppy training so when you get your puppy this is called a kong rubber brush it's kong that do the it's kong, all yeah. the toys yeah, and things yeah, yeah. like that these are on amazon for i think 4.99 five pounds Bargain. so and it's perfect so but these brushes are used for your single coated dogs um you know your boston your staffies your pugs mm -hmm. your french bulldogs um yeah and, and they're brilliant uh, okay. they these are amazing i did a video recently on my instagram page and it <laughs> if you do it the hair was literally coming out it was just non-stop so these are brilliant too yeah um so going back to the to the mat it's so important that you have the correct tools and the correct correct equipment at home mm -hmm. to brush your dog make it a thing don't make it a chore make yeah. it nice so and the reason why you do group your dog at home is because not only are you building a bond with your dog, you know, you, you're you sitting there, you could be watching a bit of telly, you know, a bit called midwife, whatever you like, and you could be sitting, I'm so upset, go away to Christmas now, I feel like, so. Never <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Um, so you can be sitting there watching TV, and you just brush your dog, you will learn more about your dog then, about how your dog feels, if your dog's underweight, if it's yeah. overweight, and you've given it too many bits and bobs. Yeah. You, you know, if you've got any lumps, bumps, parasites, anything, because if you find that early on, if you find a lump earlier on, mm. you can just take it to the vet and you've not got any worry. Yeah. You know, it's so yeah. important that even their teeth, like down to their teeth. I mean, I don't do teeth cleaning at the Shaggy Dog Grooming Salon. Mm -hmm. However, it's something I would like to do. Right. But there are other ways that you can clean your teeth. And I know oh, yeah. that you've recently spoke about that in one of your videos. Yes, yeah, there's loads of different ways of doing it. Um, and we've got videos about it. Um, I think the reality is, um, unfortunately, some of the more traditional ways don't work as well as people think. No, okay. um, but yeah, definitely things like antlers, yes. um, yakkers, um, and if people don't want to feed raw bones, they're available. Antlers, most people are comfortable feed and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, raw bones and stuff like that work really, really well. But I understand not everyone wants to do it. Yeah, I, and I, you know, I can understand that that mm. side as well. But I mean, yeah. my dogs love an antler bone. They're constantly yeah. gnawing on my antlers. Stuff. Are really, really good. They absolutely love it. And that's how dogs' teeth work. They they exactly. grind down. Right. I mean, there aren't a huge amount of toothbrushes in the wild. Um, when you look at wolf, it's, it's probably not going to be brushing trying to brush teeth. a wolf's teeth. Well, he hasn't any thumbs. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, um, so you wanna you're checking all of that and bits yeah, and pieces. Everything. Uh, you've got some clippers. Oh, these these are toenail clippers. Mm -hmm. um, dog toenail clippers. Yeah, yeah. Don't be using these at home. <laughs> you won't get very far. I don't think you're not being able to. So um, a tail, a tail. Sorry, a um, the nail clippers. Yeah. Um, you can clip your dog's nails at home. Mm -hmm. There's no problem with that. Just be careful in the direction that you cut your dog's nails, as well as not hitting the quick. So the quick is a nerve ending in the nails, yep. and if you catch that, your dog will bleed, and it and it and it, it does. Uh, yeah. So never use a earbud that you yeah. use on yourself down your ear because mm -hmm. you can damage the ear canal of the dog. Okay. So I recommend you using these cotton balls that you can yeah. get from anywhere. These are from Super Drug Um And what I recommend doing is, there's two ways of doing it. So the first way that I prefer to do mm -hmm. is I literally do this with the cotton rod ball. Yeah. That creates like a nice little thick point. You've not got a skinny point that can damage the dog's yeah. ear. Then what so, I, so this bit's going in or uh, that bit? Either, either or they're either pretty, pretty similar, just in nice soft, yeah, yeah, just nice and And then I would literally put this cleaner on, so I can never pronounce this, wow, I don't wool, know. wool. Clue. But this is quite a strong cleaner. You can get softer ear cleaners yeah. if your dog has got sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. um, that also remove and break down the bacteria yeah. in there. Um, I know that pro pooch do do one, um, mm. but in terms of, I've not, I've not personally sure. used that a lot. Yeah. But this is my go-to one because it is so effective. Yeah. Um, I then just pour this on onto the ear cotton thing, yeah. and I literally either lift up your dog's ear, or mm. if it's already up, yeah. and just circular motions. Mm. Never use the same cotton bud twice, cotton ball, yeah. sorry, twice, or in either or ear. Just get a fresh one. I think it's like 98p. It's not yeah. breaking the bank, is it? Not just cool. use a separate one. Okay. Um, so that, or the other way of doing it is literally squirting it down the dog's ear. Really? And then massaging the dog's ear. Right. And then getting your cotton bud and just cleaning it out. Okay. Um, but I personally want someone shoving something in my ear and like 
that, that I wonder, you, would you would you say if you're getting to the point where you think that's necessary, maybe it's best to see a groomer would, or a vet? Yeah, your dog's ears may need some attention yeah. at that stage. So okay. be knowledgeable about what yeah. your dog's needs are. If you mm. do need to go see a vet, if you do need to see yeah. a groomer, then we can we can assist. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that we spoke about the single coated dogs with yeah. the this brush. About all dogs, you can use these brushes on all, okay. um, even your Dalmatian. So a single yeah. coated dog, it just wasn't effective and it won't really do anything, but it mm. just helps, you know, push, uh, picking up all like, the debris sure. and stuff. Yeah, okay. The other dog I want to talk about is a double coated dog. Mm. So your German Shepherd. Yeah. Your labs and all, you know, your, your big, thick, heavy coats. Um, using a, either a ray that will help bring up, I've not got it with me. Okay. This is again, like a little pinned, little pin brush yeah. and it helps just pull up the undercoat. There's also something called a coat king. It's something similar to this actually, but okay. not as harsh. Right. And it's perfect. It really brings up all, all the um, sure. undercoat because that's what you're pulling out. Yeah. Whenever you're brushing dog with any brush you are using, any tool which is needed for your dog, mm -hmm. Don't overbrush in the same area. You will cause brush burn to your dog. And that's basically, we can get it, so it's like carpet burn. Yeah. So if you keep brushing the same area, you're gonna cause a big yeah, sore yeah. and, it, and it hurts. So just be aware of what you're doing. Then. Yeah. Using the correct tools and the correct products to help you, like the detangling spray, um, you can get leave-in conditioners, you can get anything. Um, will also help with your dogs being comfortable whilst being groomed. Um, after you've brushed your dog though, you need to use a comb. Okay. Um, the comb basically is your final piece of resistance. It um, <laughs> it will literally get any last little bits out. Why is it close to that? Right, so this is called a greyhound comb. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just different pin sizes. So yeah. if you do have like a li little, tiny little knot that this can't catch, yeah. this will literally get it out. So um, you can get different size combs, but this is called a greyhound comb because it's got two different sizes and there's no handle. But um, if you've got something like a um, tennis elbow or things yeah. like that, then having a handle brush would be better for yeah. you because of your positioning of your okay. of your hand. Just but that is pretty much, I think, mm -hmm. the basics of what to do at home. So just be careful, regular grooming at home, yeah. but also having your dog groomed at the salon as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any questions, I mean, these people out here, um, <laughs> then um, you are more than welcome to contact me. Um, my information is on Google. I do not have a website though, but um, my contact number is on there if you just want to give me a text. And you're on Facebook? Facebook, Instagram. I have an email as well if you have any questions, which is info at shaggydogsalon.co.uk. And your Instagram, uh, you do lots of stories. You've got loads of yes. tips and stuff on there, so people should follow you. Yes, I've started to do that fancy thing that all the fancy people do. You know, and they've got like the highlights. So I've yeah. started to do that. Okay. Um, but I regularly show what it's like in the salon. Mm -hmm. um, some days, me and my hair everywhere. <laughs> After a dog just got me soaking wet from the bath. Um, also, the dog just seen in a different environment. So you yeah. know that the dog is safe. So if you are looking for a groomer, you need to know, firstly, they're qualified. There are so many people out there who are not qualified, yeah. insured, mm -hmm. and that you trust them with your dog. Yeah. So my salon's a one-to-one -one salon. There's only one dog, or if you've got a household, two or three, that's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as it's household dog salon, that's yeah. it. As long as you trust that person and the knowledge that they know and that you're comfortable leaving them, mm -hmm. that's fine. If you don't feel, ask if you could stay for, maybe not the first groom, if they're a puppy or their first yeah. groom, but if you want to come in, ask, just say, do you mind if I just, or even pass through a window just to see if they're all right? Well, I've been yeah. to your, your salon and you can see, right uh, and actually you could, people go for a walk to Hockley Woods, it's yeah. nice and close, yeah. have a nice little walk. Get them on my tea and then bring them in to me. <laughs> I was thinking about the dog while you are grooming. Yeah, no, exactly. Take a little walk and then. Exactly, and then that's get. why I've done it because the insecurities, because I had a bad experience with my dog when he went to the salon. And that's another reason why I really wanted to get involved in this mm. because I was being lazy one day and I said, oh, just take him to any salon. And I checked that they were qualified, went there, mm. came back and he ended up terrified of water. Mm. My boy loved, I've got pictures of his puppy, bubbles on his head, rubber ducks in yeah. the bath, the lot. Like he'd love it. And since coming back from that green room, he's never liked it. Okay. So I don't know what happened. No. And at the end of the day, I don't want any other dogs to experience that. So that's why I do it. And my clients will let you know mm -hmm. how much the dogs love it. They, yeah. they do, and even if they're nervous at first, the, the owner will come in and the dog's just either playing with me, happy as Larry, or yeah. having a, nine times out of ten, having a nap. Well, that's how we so first relaxed. got in contact because um, someone, uh, one of our customers, Fine Food, okay. mentioned you. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's yeah. No, that's really nice. Like it's really. But unfortunately, my books are closed at the moment. Yeah. But if I do have any cancellations or any availability, I will put it on my Facebook page. So make sure you follow. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. No, thank you so much. It's That's been an right. absolute pleasure. It's finally nice to meet the behind the scenes guys. <laughs> <laughs> as well as seeing your lovely face okay, again. Then. So thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. See ya. <laughs>